cheater. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our health condition workshop. Uh, Mary, you're sitting a little taller than you started. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Scoot down. There laughs> hey, we're going to talk about food allergies tonight, and we have a really special guest that Bev is going to introduce us to. And my pleasure, Mary Tyler, ooh, the nerdy nutritionist. <laughs> and you know what's really wonderful? Mary is also um, doing her internship right now to become fully certified as a BioTouch practitioner. We are just thrilled to have you here with us, dear. Yeah, Thank we you so are. much. So, so again, remember, uh, if you want to download the workbook to how to work on food allergies that we will go over after Mary gives us her presentation, go to justtouch.com forward slash workbook. It's also a link there in the comments. And we also have a link to Mary's uh, website, nerdynutritionist.com. And uh, we're just going to let you take off, and then we'll all come back together with some questions. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments, and we'll pass them on to Mary. All right. Cool. So thanks for uh, having me on, and thanks, everyone, for showing up. Um, I appreciate it. Um, so we're going to talk about food allergies. I feel like food allergies are one of those topics that everyone feels like they have or have experienced, or you know someone who ha has a food allergy. Um, so I think we want to figure out a little bit about like, how can we get there? Um, how do they come about? Um, so if we look at it holistically, um, there's so many areas where food allergies can occur and they may not even start out as food allergies. They may start out as kind of like intolerances, like histamines. Um, and that can come from air, your water, especially your digestion. And I'll be spending a little bit of time on that one. Um, as well as any of your personal care products. And then also think about um, how uh, like any of like you use candles, fragrances. Um, so I would say if you've noticed like over the years, you feel like you're becoming more and more allergic to like foods or, you know, and I think one of the things that many people don't realize is you can have symptoms of food allergies that are not what you think is an allergic reaction. So like headaches, um, you can be bloated, you can have hives. Um, to me, hives are one of those that everybody thinks about, but you also can have other skin irritations. And sometimes we think it could be acne or we could think it could be, you know, um, could be eczema. Um, a lot of those other type of diagnosis of skin conditions can actually result from having um, a gut dysbiosis. So I want to take a quick minute and talk about uh, why digestion is very, very important. So I'm going to just kind of do a quick, let's talk about what's important about digestion. So the digestive system actually starts in the brain. Um, so you have to, you know, you get triggered of like when you're cooking, you smell, you know, and it starts to wake up your, you know, your system and says, hey, we're about to eat. Let's get happy. <laughs> um, the other next step to it is um, your mouth. When you start to chew your food, um, digestion starts there, especially your carbohydrate digestion um, starts in your mouth. So then it goes down into your stomach. And I am giving a very simple high level version of this. Uh, there's so much involved. Um, so once it goes down into your stomach, that's where your stomach acid gets to working um, of starting to basically disinfect um, and start to break down the protein in your food. And then what it will do is it'll leave the stomach and it'll go into the duodenum. And this is like where digestion really happens. Um, so I want to be clear about when that starts to happen, the liver's recruited, you get your gall gallbladders recruited in there, as well as your pancreas, all of these functions start to come into play for optimal digestion. Then it moves on into the rest of your small intestines. And if you've been able to properly start to break everything down, you're going to start absorbing all the minerals and nutrients from that food um, that you originally started eating leaves the small intestines and it heads into your large intestines where it says, okay, we've done everything we needed. Now we're going to take all the waste and, you know, it eventually evacuates the system. 
Um, so if you ask me, hey, how do food allergies come about? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, my first part is, are you stressed? If you're stressed, one of the things that's going to happen is if you're extremely stressed out and you go to eat, your body's going to prioritize survival over digestion. Digestion is supposed to happen during rest and digest. And so if you're not in what we call a parasympathetic state, you will not start to digest your food. And then when that happens, you go to eat your food. And what do most of us think happens is, oh, I have heartburn after eating something. Well, I'm sorry. When you sit in front of a scary movie and you're trying to eat your dinner and all of a sudden you get the daylight scared out of you, your body's going to think something else happened. It's going to say, I don't need food right now. <laughs> I got to go fight this tiger. And so when you shut off digestion, your brain is going to shut off digestion because you're considered stressed and, and your body is prioritizing survival. And so what happens is when you turn off your hydrochloric acid that's in your stomach that is needed to start breaking down your food, it sits there for a while. And then you're starting to screw up your whole digestive path because things aren't moving properly. Um, so when that happens, um, that is a lot of times that's the start of when you start to develop sensitivities and food allergies, you, this could be something that happens for years. And then all of a sudden you go, why am I allergic to this all of a sudden? And it's because you got to think about what kind of water are you drinking? Are you drinking filtered water with minerals in it? If not, you're drinking toxins in your water because we know there's a lot of pollutants in our waters. Um, you have to think about, you know, air fresheners, your personal care products. If they're not good, you're absorbing those in your skin. Therefore, you know, that stuff starts to wear out and starts to stress your body. Um, and so that's where I'm putting that emphasis on stress is, and stress is not just what you think is stress. Because once you're stressed, you can start to make your body ill. And when it's not running properly, then it's, you know, dealing with more oxidative stress and that's internal and it's just continuing to you know keep that up when you're inflamed you know let's talk about like your knees and joint pain that's inflammation that's your body saying hey i need some attention and then if you're taking medication those medications are actually in many ways they're depleting the nutrients that are needed for digestion to happen um so i wanted uh to just kind of give that little rundown of the digestive system and let everybody know this is kind of how it can happen. Um, so many times you got to think about, we could have nutrient deficiencies and I'm going to say most of us are nutrient deficient. Um, and a lot of times what happens is if you start to feel sensitive towards food, everyone starts to cut out food. Oh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. And when you cut out too much of your food, you're even cutting out nutrients. Um, and when you don't have enough nutrients, then your body doesn't have what it needs to do its functions. Um, so that's where it's hard because it's kind of like this is the chicken, the egg. Like, is it because I'm stressed? Is it because my digestion's off? Is it because I don't have enough nutrients? That's one of those pieces where you kind of need to find a practitioner and work with them and say, so that you can say, hey, what is your body telling you? Um, and again, there's so, you know, in addition to stress, um, there are, you know, there are true, like the histamines can start to happen. Um, a lot of people, I think, start out with a histamine reaction um, and then they can develop into full blown food allergies. But in, sometimes I like to think histamines and um food allergies are kind of the same thing because you're going to notice if you eat something and then there's days where you, you you know you'll eat you eat it and you know it immediately then that's kind of more of a more acute reaction to it um so like you know you break out your throat starts swelling you know that's like peanut allergies a lot of people have that um but peanuts also have another component to them uh, they a lot of times they're moldy 
and mold in your house, in your environment, on your food. Basically, peanuts and coffee are both notorious for being moldy. A lot of people can overreact to those. Um, so is it really a peanut allergy or is it really, you know, a reaction to mold? So it's one of those pieces to keep in mind. Um, and then, you know, so you got, you know, if you're taking medications, a lot of your medications are depleting your, your minerals. Um, and when you're depleted on minerals, your body's not going to be able to perform optimally. And then things start to break down and not work right. So then more problems are going to happen. It's kind of like you're driving down the road. And your tire's kind of flat, but then you decide, oh, I think I can go a little bit longer. And then all of a sudden it starts to fall apart. You know, <laughs> So <laughs> that's the way we feel about our bodies. Um, but the important piece is to know our bodies are not broken. And in a lot of ways, when we have histamine reactions um, or some of the other things, we need to remind ourselves that our body's trying to help us. Our body really is trying to say, hey, I need you to listen to me. And if we aren't listening, um, that's when it just kind of keeps throwing more and more at us. And sometimes that's when we feel like we're, we're breaking ourselves down too much. So um, the next piece to think about is, so what do I do? Is there anything I can do for this? Um, and I think the important piece is, is to know that if you're extremely stressed, that means your adrenals are probably pretty fatigued. Um, and a lot of times what you need to do is build the energy in your body so that it can then start to do what it needs to do to heal. Um, so I would suggest, you know, you, you start to work on supporting your adrenal glands. And then as you're doing that, I'm not even a huge fan of, um, I know this is contrary to a lot of people, but I'm not a huge fan of pulling everything out of the diet. Um, I think it's more important to think about what does your body need <clears throat> in order to do what it needs to do. Um, so one of the, one of the great minerals in our bodies that is, you know, often forgotten about is copper. Copper is a very important mineral for energy production. And when we sometimes have too much iron in our body, we are depleting our copper and then our energy goes and then we tend to experience more allergy reactions. So when we do that, um, so one of the pieces is start eating more copper rich foods, you know, like instead of taking foods away, let's look at what we can add and start to build your body up and then say, okay, do I still need additional help? So that's where you want to support your adrenal glands. One of the favorites is an adrenal cocktail that is doing like orange juice with some potassium um, and some sodium. Um, and then that, and so you're getting the vitamin C, the potassium and the sodium in order to help build the adrenal glands because they're getting fatigued. Um, the other piece is adding in like beef liver or other copper rich um, foods, mussels, oysters, um, those are a couple of examples. Um, and then, it, so when you're adding those things into your body, you're now giving your body more nutrients to absorb and then help. Another one that's to keep in mind is iodine. A lot of times is also considered efficient only because it is very important for your thyroid. And if you happen to have a low functioning um, thyroid, it can also cause your digestion to be off which then in turns causes you the downstream impact of now you're not digesting your food now you're also like having bacteria and other things going further down the track than where it's supposed to be going so it's just a trickle down effect and it's kind of like the chicken and the egg it's like which one comes first you gotta think minerals at the end of the day think some minerals um, supporting your body, and then you're giving your body the tools that it needs. There's going to be times parasites can also be involved in this. I didn't want to bring them up early on because when you're not digesting your food, you're, you're not, you know, a lot of people get start out with food poisoning. Sometimes you get food poisoning so many times. That is an early sign that you have a breakdown issue going on in your digestion, maybe not as much hydrochloric acid. Um, so you might need some digestive support like enzymes um, to help. 
Um, and it, and it, and again, let's think about start with the basis. Let's look at food before you start saying, Hey, what supplement can I take? Or is there a medication or anything we can take for food allergies? The best thing to do is what food are you needing to put in your body to help it do what it needs to do? Um, and so the next piece would be <clears throat> if you do, um, have it and you you're supporting yourself nutritionally and you're still noticing you're having some high reactions there's also a couple of tools you could do some biomagnetism um and what that'll do is it'll help balance your um, ph in your body um and that will also help get rid of the uh, additional things and then also um n-a-e-t is another technique that has been um very very useful for while you're working on the nutrition, it also helps do some reset in your body so that you no longer are as reactive to certain foods. Um, so it allows you that time to help heal your gut. Um, and that's pretty important. And then, you know, for me, because now I am part of the BioTouch uh, community, um, I've noticed for myself um, and like in some of the, what I've been reading up on it, um, I think BioTouch is a good addition um, in this piece of the uh, of the healing solution. Um, so if I had to give people advice of what to get started with first, I would tell you find ways to reduce your stress. And I am quite certain um, when Bev starts to go over the points, um, I believe the stress points are going to be involved. Um so if you can learn those and start to calm down your stress, um, that is going to be super um, huge because when people have done sensitivity tests, if they're super stressed, um, they have shown to be more sensitive to more foods than when they're not stressed. Um, so if you think about like you eat, you, like for example, for me, it used to be if I eat gluten, um, when I was in a stress state, gluten, I would react so fast. But when I would go on vacation, I could eat gluten. I might not react as much. So the only thing to think about there is stress. Um, so that's just an example. Work on your stress first. Do an adrenal cocktail. The other piece is, you know, work on your digestion. So how do you do that? Chew your food. I mean, there's really a reason of like 20 to 30 times. You need to chew your food. We're not in a marathon um, race of, you know, trying to win the Nathan's hot dog contest, you know, because you're not, you're not allowing the digestion to begin in your mouth. So you need to start chewing your food. Um, you also need to sit when you eat, don't eat on the run. Don't eat while you're standing, you know, try to put yourself, you know, again, it's called rest and digest for a reason. So put yourself in a parasympathetic state, you know, the points are good doing some breathing before you eat, Hey, I know I'm talking to it quite a bit. You know, I used to, I used to eat on the run quite a bit, you know, eat in the airport, eat standing up next to a server when I was, you know, working at client sites. So I know it's hard, but it can be done. Um, and it's important for your health. So if you want to take your health seriously, time to look at that. So again, uh, the next piece is what do you need to do to heal your, your gut? Find a practitioner who can help you or talk to your physician and say, hey, I think I might have some stuff. Taking, you know, Nexium and some of those things, you really don't have a high, most people don't have too much um, stomach acid like most, like they think. It's usually too little. So it's more of like, let's think about instead of going after Nexium or some of these other pills, look at drinking a little apple cider vinegar before you have your meal. Um, put a little more acid in your stomach so that you can start to digest. Um, and in addition to working on your food allergies, you're going to start noticing overall health benefits too. So it's, you're, you're looking at it holistically. Start with your digestion, clean it up. So many other things are going to come out of that. Um, I'm a firm believer of start slow, start simple. Um, because if you're already stressed and now you're going to think, oh my God, okay, I got to chew my food. I need to drink this and I need to go, oh, oh wait, what, what are those points again? Like pick one thing and try it each week, you know, <laughs> don't try to do everything all at one time. Um, because the goal of this is 
you want to go on the journey, you want to heal, your body can heal. You just need to have that communication with it to say, hey, I'm listening um, and you're getting started. So hopefully that works. Um, maybe I met Perfect. my dog. Sorry. <laughs> Sheesh, man, I just went on a roller coaster. <laughs> right? <laughs> And that was my pared down version. <laughs> <laughs> so, so get, we set a little time here. T so tell us who the nerdy nutritionist is. What, yeah. what do you do at nerdynutrition.com? Oh, okay. Great. So I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner and I'm also um, a root cause protocol consultant too. So I've got two certifications. Um, what I do is I help help anyone who is struggling with you know gut issues and blood sugar that's actually the one thing that i probably messed up on um in my talk is if you're not eating a balanced meal you can cause your cortisol to stay out of whack because your blood sugar is going too high um so that is another key piece so you always want to eat a protein a fat and a carb together and you definitely got to make sure you balance those because if you can balance your blood sugar, now you're not spiking your cortisol. Um, so I, I, I help people who are stressed out, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I do. Um, and I get to teach. Um, what I love the most is helping teach people how to eat again. Um, it's not that we learn badly. I think we just develop some habits mm -hmm. and most importantly, it's understanding our bodies are not against us. All right. Our bodies are working very, very hard to champion and, and like do the best it can for us. And we just need to learn to listen. And I think we've learned to, um, we've developed the habits of ignoring things. Right. Um, so yeah. for me, I got into this to fix my own health problems. I was struggling with gluten sensitivities. I mean, I would eat gluten and I kid you not the next day, I would be walking around like I, rheumatoid arthritis was throughout my entire body. Mm. I could barely move. The pain was so excruciating and it was just from eating gluten, you know? And when I was younger, I was allergic to Christmas trees, a live Christmas tree. I could not be in a room with a Christmas tree. Mm. And I am now, thankfully, because I have been working on healing my gut and, you know, getting my health back as best I can, <clears throat> I can sit in the room with the Christmas tree and not, my eyes won't swell up and, I, you know, everything, you know, I, all of a sudden it's like an instant sinus infection. Oh, so, oh, um, right. <laughs> you know, that's the best part for me, you so, know, so but it took cleaning up my gut too. So we have a question. So uh, somebody wants to know, so do digestive enzymes help? Digestive enzymes do help, um, and not in all cases. Um, that's going to be one of those pieces of where um, it could be hydrochloric acid, but many people need the digestive enzyme in order to help um, break down the food. And the reason why I say that is because most of us are mineral deficient, and our enzymes are dependent on minerals. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it like this, you know, your foundation is, Minerals are the, you know, are basically the basis for enzymes. Enzymes are for, you know, hormones. So like you need one to get to the next one for them to all run efficiently. Mm. <laughs> so there are times, yes. And especially like if you consider, you know, like for example, you don't eat carbs for a long time. You're not gonna break them down when you start eating them again. You're not gonna break them down very well because your body quit making the enzymes for them. Uh -huh. Or if you're, deficient in your enzymes you got to think about that let's say somebody decides i'm going to go vegetarian and for some reason you know they, they want to eat meat again they're not going to have the enzymes to eat to break down the protein so they're going to feel bad hmm. you know um there's just it, those little things to keep in mind and so that's where you do need you know to look yeah. into that thanks Wow. Well, we, so, so this mineral thing too, are, are we talking about this? You, you always hear about the alkaline or the acidic body. I, I mean, are right. we looking to, to take the minerals to move us into the alkaline body? So we're not trying to go alkaline or acidic. Our bodies want to be in what we call home, homeostasis. Mm -hmm. 
Right. The perfect pH for your body is like seven. It's kind of like right in the middle. And if you sway too much, too alkaline, that will all, that will, a lot of times what happens is that pushes you into food allergies and, and a higher histamine hmm. because your body's too alkaline and it can't support that. So, and then you can also be too acidic and then there's problems that occur with that. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really wanting to be in like that proper balance because your body, that's what your body's shooting for. So yeah. the minerals are really on, if you're stressed, you are, you're basically pulling magnesium out of your body super fast. You're pulling potassium and a lot of people who have food allergies, type two diabetes, ADHD, ADD, they're going to be having blood sugar problems. Their cortisol is out of whack. And the other piece is you're basically causing your body to sway one direction or another. But a lot of times it's blood sugar too. And mm -hmm. most of us think, I don't have a blood sugar problem. Well, did you have donuts for breakfast and no protein with your coffee? You spiked your blood sugar. And then you <laughs> wonder why you're hangry at 10 a.m. You know? <laughs> You right. know, and then it's when you're doing that, then that's how like your body gets stressed out and you do that day in, day out over time. Other things start to break down. Wow. Oh. Okay. Wow, Mary. We are glad that you're on the BioTouch boat too. Because no you, you, are, you are fun. You are a storehouse of knowledge. Uh, your journey is awesome. It's inspiring and yep. uh, we look Thank forward you. to hearing Definitely. more and i'm from still you. on it so yeah. i'm excited oh, yeah. about it's it you know and, never and i like to help others with theirs so That's all right perfect. so uh, check out mary <laughs> tyler at nerdynutritionist.com and we'll be seeing more of her i am sure so yep. we're gonna say bye bye to mary and teach you some points on how to work with food thank allergies. you mary, Thanks, mary. See you later bye safe travels well, once again, overload. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, she got me at digestion starts in the brain. Right. <laughs> and then it just went from there. I know. You know, I have a lot of things that are going through my mind because it makes sense, you know. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Well, there you go. The one thing that stood out for me was stress. Right. And as we know, and most even medical doctors agree, 80% of all of our conditions or dis-ease originates with stress of some kind in the body so and we have found biotouch clinically we've proven reduces stress we and, Boy, no and levels out cortisol levels something she talked yes, about yes that also. was the other one yeah. yep Yep. So we're going to move right into teaching you a few sets of points. You can uh, download the manual if you want with us, uh, justtouch.com forward slash workbook. And we are going to teach it as if you'd never even heard about BioTouch. Uh, so we're going to let Bev take over and do that. Okay. Well, we always like to go through a, a couple of um, basic information because we're hoping that we're, uh, you know, someone new is uh, watching or listening. And um, we like to just give a, a little overview of, of what this wonderful technique is and, and how easy you can learn to, to practice it. So first thing we're going to do is go to the workbook on uh, the page six. And at the top, it says, what is BioTouch? And that's, that's where we always like to start. What, what is BioTouch? Well, it is a very light touch modality using the first two fingers of your hands and touching lightly on the skin. One person touching another person lightly on the skin. That's basically the definition of BioTouch. Very, very simple. So let's, um, I, there's four bullets on this page that uh, kind of gives you an overall uh, review of um, why this is so amazing and effective. So the first bullet is it's easy to learn. Even children can learn it and practice it. And, you know, this is, this is basically the uh, magical thing about BioTouch. Every single one of us can learn and use BioTouch and be effective immediately. That's really 
I mean, if I said nothing else, that would be, that would be it right there. So the next bullet is it's a complement to any healthcare program. And um, this is, I think, why it's so wonderful to have people like Mary on, um, because we see how incredibly effective BioTouch can be integrated and used with, you know, just everything. I, whether you're under the uh, uh, doctor's care or you're, you know, um, on a, a particular um, pharmaceutical, uh, you on a special diet, uh, as with Mary, um, those food allergies, it, whatever you're going through, BioTouch is a complement to. And over the last couple of years, we have understood that it's it's really very holistic. Um, in its effect, um, because BioTouch begins on the body and then can address not just those um, conditions that affect the body, but all the other parts of ourselves. Um, and this is what we always refer to as that whole journey of self-awareness. So BioTouch is, wow, it's always expanding. Um, the moment that you begin to practice it. The third bullet, it has no levels of ability. And this is probably one of the most amazing gifts of BioTouch. Every single one of us can learn it and be effective. And the moment that you learn the technique, you have got it. You know, we have other programs that, you know, if you're interested, we can always talk about. But if you just learn those 17 sets of points, you have you have a tool that you can begin to use immediately. You're totally effective immediately. And, you know, I always think anybody, anytime, anywhere, that is what BioTouch can do. It's amazing. So just know there's no, you know, we don't go through all these levels and, and you have to be, you know, um, initiated or whatever. This is a very basic toolbox. The moment that you have this technique, it belongs to you. You can start practicing and helping everyone in your life, or maybe a stranger. You never know. Because I guarantee you, the moment that you have this amazing technique, it is going to make you want to help everybody. <laughs> it just works that way. So the last bullet is it requires no special uh, preparation, a, a belief or a state of mind. So this is one of the things that we really, you know, go into a lot is that BioTouch is in the moment. The, the moment that you need to reach out and touch someone and help them with stress or with um, feeling more cared for or pain, you've got it right there. No, no preparation. OK, we don't there's no belief system required with BioTouch. Um, oh, you know, there's no particular state of mind that you have to enter into. No, you know, cleansing or preparing or None of that is necessary to be effective with BioTouch. And so those four bullets pretty much, you know, give you an, an understanding of, of um, what you can do, how you can learn BioTouch and what can happen for you as well. So let's just quickly go over the process before you begin to practice BioTouch with someone. Before you do anything, we wanna wash our hands always wash our hands. If you're working with more than one person, you want to wash your hands. It's always one person touching another person on the skin. You're using the first two fingers of your hands and you're touching like a butterfly. Very easy. Each point that you touch, you want to hold six to eight seconds. And that's basically it. That is it. Once you do that, you can begin to help anybody. It's immediate. It's immediate. So the ne this next page um, is in our manual. And it, it's um, just the terms that we use to help people who are uh, learning BioTouch, how to touch, 
um, in certain ways to um, to on the procedures. But what we always like to do is look at those first two bullets, the associate. This is the person who is going to perform the BioTouch. And we, we like this because we have the associate as described in the dictionary is one who is inspired to pursue a work, one in often in company with another, implying an intimacy or equality. And boy, is that what BioTouch does? It brings us into a relationship of healing, an equality, both the and and then one having an interest of com in common with another. So that equality and the second bullet, the recipient is the one who receives the touch. In that relationship, both are equally giving and receiving. That's the beauty about BioTouch. There's, it's, it's just a, a magical experience and bodies get better, our lives get better. It's, it's amazing. So, um, Paul, was there anything you wanted to add? Okay. So let's begin to learn these, uh, simple point, uh, sets of points that you can address food allergies. You know, we already know from Mary, um, what we can do, um, to kick something into activity, uh, minerals, enzymes, foods, all that. But here we have BioTouch who can complement that process. So let's begin with what we call the greeting. Now we're going to watch vid videos on all these sets. Paul's gonna play them to, um, so that we can actually see one person doing this uh, set on another person. But I will just say that the greeting, you must do the greeting before you do anything else. It is the key to the whole body opening up and, and sets up this harmony between uh, the, the associate and the recipient and begins this relationship of healing to begin. So Paul. Um, so let's uh, just tell people if you get the workbook or you're interested in getting the whole manual, each of these pages, there's two pages to each set that we're gonna teach. One is this little drawing that you see here. And then the next page is uh, the description of the points. These words are gonna be the same as on the video. And if you'll notice down on the bottom there, there is uh, a little purple, whoops, we went, whoops. There's a little purple thing that says, click here to watch the video. And that gives you a link to the video that we're going to see here. So it's very easy to uh, learn this on your own too, so. The greeting is always performed at the beginning of each session. It's the only set that uses one hand and the only set that indicates which hand to use. The greeting is performed with the dominant hand. If you are right-handed, use your right hand. If you are left-handed, use your left hand. The greeting is made by touching at point one, which is in the fleshy area, just below the bottom of the breastbone or sternum. Hold this point for six to eight seconds. Then with the same two fingers, touch point two on the back. To find point two, look for the big bone at the base of the neck. From here, move one to one and a half inches to the left. This is point two. Hold this point for six to eight seconds. More than one associate may work with a recipient provided that all of the associates perform the greeting. If the associate or the recipient leaves the session, or if someone who hasn't done the greeting touches either the recipient or the associate, the greeting must be reestablished. Then the session may proceed from where it was interrupted. Okay, that was the greeting. The next set of points we're going to um, show you 
is called the infection allergy and poison. They're, they're actually three separate um, sets, um, but I believe the, um, the video is gonna show all three, right, Paul? So the allergy point is the one that you can really, really use um, and, and have the option to use all three, actually. It won't hurt anything. So we'll go ahead and watch the video. The infection, allergy, and poison sets are three separate sets of points. They all share the same hole point, which is the same as greeting point one, located in the fleshy area just below the base of the breastbone. As with all sets of points, these may be touched repeatedly. Infections of any kind, anywhere in the body, may be addressed by holding X and with the other hand touching point 1, which is at the base of the large muscle on the right side of the neck and slightly above and behind metabolism point 1. Allergies, Allergies or, or allergic reactions, reactions may be addressed by holding X and with, and with the, the other hand touching point two, two which is on the right side of the neck, neck directly behind metabolism point, point three on the top of the large muscle. muscle. To address poisoning within the body, hold X and with the other hand alternately touch point one and point two. Okay. The next set is called the metabolism set. And this is a, a great set for, gosh, just about everything. <laughs> it really helps the body to, the body, as Mary was saying, the body's trying to be our friend. It's very intelligent. So this set can help your body get rid of what it doesn't require and bring in what it wants. Um, also in this set, um, she mentioned blood sugar issues and this, um, metabolism set has this fourth point that you will, uh, see on the video. The stress set may be used to address any manifestation of physical, emotional, or mental stress, as well as anxiety and shingles. Hold it X, which is in the fleshy area just below the bottom of the breastbone. It is the same as greeting point one. Then with the other hand, touch points one and two, which are the same points as in the heart set. These points are found by imagining a line running from the notch at the top of the breastbone to a place on the left breast where the nipple would be on a youth. Divide this imaginary line into thirds. Point one is at the top of the first third. Point two is at the top of the second third. These points may be touched repeatedly, and remember to touch each point for at least six to eight seconds. Ahead of ourselves but that, that actually was the stress set and remember this is very important evidently because one of the big things mary was talking about was our bodies under stress so this is a great one uh, to do for food allergies so now we're going to do the metabolism set we're going to watch the video <laughs> The metabolism, the metabolism set can be used, used to help, to help the, body the body assimilate what it needs and eliminate what it doesn't need. need. The, the metabolism, metabolism set has two steps. Step, step one, one involves touching points in matching fire, fire along the large, the large muscles, muscles on the front, on the front of the neck. Of the neck. Points, points one and one are located above the collarbone in the soft indentations on both sides of the notch at the top of the breastbone. Points two and two are halfway, halfway up, up the neck, neck on the front, front of the large, large muscles. muscles. Points, Points three and three are at the top, top of the neck, neck on the front, front of the large muscles. muscles. The, second the second step involves, involves holding, holding a point, a point on the front.
front, front of the body points next to the spine on the back. Hold point X on the front of the body is on a line directly between where the nipples would be on a youth and is one to two inches to the left of the breastbone. Another way to find X is one third of the way up the breastbone from greeting point one and one to two inches to the left of the breastbone. The points on the back are located next to the spine, forming a rectangle around the breakover point. The breakover point is where the bottom of the rib cage joins the spine and can be found by imagining a line directly through the body from greeting point one. To perform step two, find hold point X on the front of the body and touch points one through four on the back. Point one is approximately one to two inches up from the breakover point on the left spine muscle. Point two is directly across from point one on the right spine muscle. Point three is two to three inches below the breakover point on the right spine muscle. Point four is used to address blood sugar problems and is added to the other metabolism points when needed. It is located across from point three on the left spine muscle. Okay, man, okay. I was having a hard time bouncing around. They changed this whole program, but... Oh, boy. So I, I did want to bring up, because one of the things she talked about, we didn't really put it in here, is the whole digestive situation. Right. And we do have an upper abdomen, spe specifically the upper abdomen would be good because yep. it hits the liver, the pancreas, the spleen. Exactly. Uh, I know when Jenny uh, has a food allergy and she bloats up, I mean, it's like this balloon that happens. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I can work with her, uh, and within five minutes, she, it relaxes the whole digestive system. Wow. The belly goes down. So, um, you know, that that's a good one to do, too, if you're interested in, that in learning that. That is a good one. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe let's, you want, no, we won't show it today. You can, we can always uh, send that to you, but uh, those three right. are really uh, the basis of what she was talking about, a metabolic process, a stress, uh, yep. and uh, th those two things alone are going to really help. So. Really help. Oh, yes. I agree. So, How fun. Yeah. We are here to help you any way we can. Every month we have a new health condition workshop. Uh, next month, though, we're not having one next month. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, it's Thanksgiving. Yes. So we, we skip uh, November. And we have menstrual cramps in December. So, uh, and we're getting ready to do our whole uh, 2023 uh, workshops Schedule. too. Yeah. If you have a particular health condition you would like us to address, please let us know. Send us an email, Absolutely. office at justtouch.com. All right, there we go. Another okay, one. Okay, and Another I want to thank now. Mary again. Oh, yes. Yep. That yep. was awesome. Uh, was... Any questions, you go to her website, nerdynutritionists.com, and uh, or send us an email. We'll pass it on to her and uh, pass this on to your friends. You know, every, I think everybody's got Do it got and some learn it kind, yourself. <laughs> yes, everybody has some kind of a food allergy. And we're talking just like Mary was saying. This is simple. Yeah. You know, you're talking maybe three to five minutes max to do right. even one thing or two things. So I this agree. is not a huge time out of your life. It, it, to be as effective as and you're it is. worth five minutes <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right thank you okay. all for joining us thank you bev for uh teaching us the technique thanks and, uh, paul see you a little techie yeah <laughs> techie man good evening everyone good evening